We're talking about preventing lead poisoning today. Hello and welcome to Science in 5. I'm Vismita Gupta-Smith and these are WHO's Conversations in Science. We are talking to Leslie Onion today. Welcome, Leslie. Leslie, explain to us exactly how big a public health problem is lead poisoning and who are the people at risk? Thank you for the invitation, Vismita. Lead has a, a long and dark history and the knowledge of the effects of lead have go back as far as Roman and Greek times, so almost 5,000 years. Today, WHO estimates that uh, almost one million people die from the effects of lead exposure. We're all potentially at risk from exposure to lead, but there are three groups we're particularly concerned about, and these are children under five years of age, pregnant and lactating mothers, and adults who are occupationally exposed. The effects of, of lead can often go um, unrecognised because they can be insidious and fairly mild, such as um, anemia, constipation, abdominal cramps. However, it's the neurological effects that we're most concerned about, and these um, particularly affecting those affecting children. So the neurological effects themselves can range in severity from um, irritable behaviour, um, clumsiness, right through to more serious life-threatening um, neurological diseases and effects such as encephalopathy and coma, convulsions and death. Adults are also affected, particularly cardiovascular diseases and renal diseases. These are affecting occupational groups in particular. Exposure to lead is often not serious in an acute um, incident, but uh, the repeated exposure at low levels can give rise to these severe neurological impacts that last a lifetime. Leslie, describe to us the sources of lead poisoning around us. The, there are a large number of sources of potential lead exposure. We already have taken action on a number of these, for example, the outlawing of, of leaded petrol, um, the controls on use of, of leaded water pipes for drinking water and so on, but there are still many other sources. Leaded paints, the use of lead in, in, in decorative and household paints is a concern, but there are a variety of other sources too. We still can find lead in drinking water and food. Um, it's found in some traditional medicines and cosmetics and in other household sources, um, glazed pottery and so on. The mouthing of objects containing lead is a particular danger for children. Um, small objects such as fishing weights and curtain weights can easily be swallowed and then have a lasting effect once remaining in the body but there's also the mouthing of amulets and toy jewellery and so on. A particular growing um, source of lead exposure is the, is, comes from the recycling of lead acid batteries. And these are a, a growing need in our society for whether it be for electric vehicles, whether it be for small scale uninterrupted power supply. But the recycling of these uh, batteries is often done under very um, poor conditions. Um, often within homes as a sort of cottage industry in developing countries and therefore whole communities and families can be affected. Leslie, WHO and partners are observing Lead Poisoning Prevention Week to raise awareness and call for action to prevent lead poisoning. Why is this important even in the midst of a pandemic? Well, in, a, in, the, in the pandemic we often find uh, people spending more time at home than, you, than they had done before. And obviously, if their home um, is contaminated through um, the presence of lead containing paint um, that can be causing dust inside the house, but also people might want to get engaged in, in, in hobbies which involve um, exposure to lead, such as soldering of electronics or making ceramics with glazes or oil painting, because oil paint still can contain lead. So there, um, there is often a, an increased um, hazard if spending more time in these contaminated environments. What can people do to prevent lead poisoning? There are a number of things that people can do to prevent lead poisoning. 
I think in terms of the issue of lead paint, um, you could check to see uh, whether your house contains lead paint before embarking in any major renovation pro projects. Avoiding cheap, uh, cheap brightly coloured toys, jewellery and other things that children can put in their mouths, potentially swallow. Um, also important would be to, to store food and drink in pre preferably glass containers, certainly to not store food in the in tins that can have solder inside them containing lead. I know that's a sort of common practice to reuse uh, plastic containers these days, but sometimes these plastic containers can come from lead acid batteries and other sources, so be very careful there. Finally, talk to your healthcare provider if you have any concerns. Thank you, Leslie. That was Science in 5 today. Until next time then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stick with science.